Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This has been a long time coming. I haven't done an IC station video in a very, very long time. So, um, I contacted them. I, I, I occasionally check on their site to see if they have interesting products that I um, might be interested in making a video on. And they came out with one that I'm very interested in. And I've been meaning to make one of these myself for a long time. Uh, I just lack a uh, specific tool to be able to do so uh, but they're saving me the trouble so they delivered me yet another clock uh, this one you do have to assemble yourself so that's what we're going to do today this should be a good bit of fun I don't think there's any soldering related I think it's just assembling the physical display and we'll get to it in a second it'll become quickly apparent uh, just on pricing uh, I believe this was like 33 bucks ish around. So it's actually a lot cheaper than I thought because I saw very similar clocks posted to like um, Etsy and you know that those kind of stores online uh, that people have designed and made and they're usually pretty expensive. So this looked pretty cheap. So I, I always wanted to build one of these. So anywho, uh, we have a package with something in it, mystery something, ooh. We have tools, it looks like a flathead screwdriver and an Allen key. We have hex standoffs, these like hex uh, little screws, there's some Phillips in there. There's that, there's a mini USB, ah, hoping it was USB-C, but anywho, so we got that, we have... This will start to give you a hint of what this is. Some kind of weirdly shaped laser cut acrylic slats. Hmm. Any, any ideas? Just pause the video and put them down below if you already know what this is. Uh, but, yeah, you can see it. there's a number of layers. Some of these are uh, opaque. They're just black. And some of these are actually transparent. So, yeah. Hmm, hopefully you guys have kind of an idea of what it is by now. And last but not least, actually most important, is uh, the actual body of the clock itself. Which, you can see a lot of these WS2812 style LEDs, like a lot of them. In fact, you see six banks of them. Hmm, hopefully you guys have a better idea on that now. Uh, let's just rip this open and... Okay, so... Give you guys a bit of a closer look. Uh, might have to clean off the flux. Looks like uh, some of the bits um, they did have to hand solder. Everything else is reflowed though. Everything else looks really nice. I also <laughs> uh, need to sand this front edge because it's uh, these are panelized, so they're broken off. But it looks like they're they're a little rough. So I don't want to give myself a fiberglass splinter. Anywho, uh, we see there is a light sensor, which is. Cocked at a slightly jaunty angle. There is a CR2032 uh, back, backup battery, because obviously this is, you know, a clock as a built-in RTC. This one in particular is the uh, DS32, uh, what is it, 3231SN, uh, which I've used very similar. This is a Maxim Dallas semiconductor, I think, or something like that. But yeah, I've used very similar RTCs. This one is in a larger package. I believe this is a model that actually has the crystal built into it because there is no crystal connected to it. And it may or may not be temperature compensated. Wow, you can see all the traces running width-wise. That's to connect all these LEDs. And wow, this is actually a pretty decently complex design, it looks like. Everything's daisy-chained together. There is a little speaker here. There's a microphone. Why is there a microphone? Hmm. It's also soldered. Kind <laughs> of a bit cattywampus, but eh, it'll be fine. There's a regulator, 3.3 volt regulator. Yep. Some capacitors right at the input. Mini USB. Banker resistors. Interesting. Actually, looking at these, these are not WS2812s. These are just RGB LEDs. Interesting. The plot thickens. Each one has its own transistor, it looks like. 
So variant, that's why there's so many resistors here. At first I thought they were WS2812s, they didn't look too closely. And then I'm looking at all these resistors, why the heck are there so many resistors? It's because they're using them for, they're driving the RGB channels discreetly. And they're selecting it by bank. And that also explains why there's so many traces running width-wise on the board. If, it, if these were WS2812s, they would all be in series and there'd just be like one trace going to the microcontroller. Uh, but that's not the case, and the microcontroller is an STC8G2K64S4. And it's a quad flat pack there. And yeah, and that's pretty much it, and just two lone resistors out here. One LED here, I guess that serves some funk. actually two of them. Uh, probably one of the acrylic clear ones go on the bottom, and that like sort of backlights, underlights it or something. And very cool, they have uh, touch sensors for the buttons here. And that's what these two resistors must be for. And yep, they're one mega ohm, they're high valued resistors. So yeah, they are implementing uh, capacitive touch sensing. That is really cool, I'm really excited. Okay, so enough waffling about that. Uh, no instructions provided, but this should be fairly easy to uh, to figure out. And we'll, we'll make do with what we got. So. The longest part of this video is going to consist of me on speed, beating through me peeling off all this paper from all these laser cut parts. Because this is one of those fake Nixie acrylic clocks that have the digits scribed on them with a laser. And so that when you light them from the bottom, it lights up and it looks like a Nixie clock. I mean, it basically is like a Nixie, but LED underlit. Looks like they did. They uh, separate them by digit. These are all zeros. These are all ones. So yeah. Interesting thing they didn't do what the IN12 uh, Nixie tubes do, where the five is just an upside down two. But no, this is yeah, they're actually different. Anywho, uh, I'm just gonna speed through. I might not actually show me unwrapping all of these. I'll do one set on speed through, and then uh, you guys can suffer through no more of that so i'm just going to start unwrapping these and i'll show on camera me doing just this set and then i'll do all the rest off camera because this is probably going to take me like hours and there we go so uh, i just want to show you guys i'll dim the lights a bit just get a flashlight here and as you can see when i shine it from the bottom uh, the light in Total internal reflection makes the light bounce around between the panes, uh, well, the sides of this pane. And uh, wherever there's like a disturbance, like there would be when it's slightly laser cut, uh, it shows up really clearly. So, yeah. Put an RGB LED under that and you have yourself a very nifty looking sort of retro style display. So Okay, one whole set is done. So I just did six of them. I still have 10 of these to go. So, or nine, nine sets of six. So yeah, this is gonna take a little while. Like I said, let me just do this off camera. Oh boy, um, it's been about a little over an hour. I did, I peeled everything. There are some slight imperfections um, sometimes uh, there might be a little bit of scratching, or there was gouging on the paper, whatever. So there's some marks on it, but eh, I'm not too bothered, especially considering the price. Anywho, what we have to do now is assemble this, and I'm just realizing that I don't necessarily know which order uh, these go in. So I am I might have to actually look them up. Hopefully, well, the easiest way is if they just put them in order, like zero in the front and nine in the back. That may or may not be the case, so. Real Nixie tubes actually order the digits not sequentially. Uh, they're ordered, I think, in terms of, like, what would block the most is usually up front, I think. And one is usually all the way in the back. back. And there's like a certain specific pattern for it. And I think it just has to do with minimizing, like maximizing light throughput, no matter which digit is 
is lit up. Anywho, okay, so one thing I did figure out uh, from the bottom, starting from the bottom, uh, these are, you just start stacking them, kind of, it makes sense because they put holes where parts need to stick up from. And even the order sort of makes sense too, in sort of, you know, where things have to just poke through. And then this bottom piece is just black and that just sits there. So that makes sense to me. Uh, the rest of this, I have a feeling this is at the very top. These two, oops, it looks like I forgot some, uh, some of this. But anyway, these two black pieces probably straddle like the very top and the very bottom of the displays themselves. This guy clearly goes like this, just over the LEDs. And it clears the buttons there. Uh, I forgot to peel this, so give me one second. I'm going to have to do that. And then we'll figure out which order the LEDs actually go in. So then obviously the next slat has to go here. So these two slats are almost identical, except for this doesn't have the cutout in the corner. So that clearly has to go over the button so you can still touch the buttons. Uh, this, like I said, probably has to go at the top. And then this clear piece over it so that it keeps the uh, LED it's uh, captive so hmm let's see so there's obviously eight holes to go through there and I'm gonna guess there's exactly eight of these standoffs and eight of these long screws so down I'm guessing maybe yeah there we go now it sits better uh, it was actually flipped 180 so the holes weren't aligned with the LEDs now I could see the LEDs underneath it okay so that's how that goes and then it goes like this then it goes okay so it looks like the tolerances are a little bit off or something isn't quite right so these last two are kind of harder i'm actually having to use the uh the allen key to kind of ah uh, i think i know what is up think you're supposed to put these as a spacer I know this video is riveting this is gonna drive me nuts okay I promise no more dad jokes I lied I'm just screwing with you Oh, I'm just realizing a major flaw in this design. So there was that battery in there, right? The CR2032 that I forgot to put in because actually I don't know where my spares are right now. Yeah, to actually change that battery, you need to take apart the entire clock. Like completely, even all the digits, everything. Ooh, that's not going to be so fun. Uh, I mean, right now would be the time to put the battery in. But uh, I I literally don't know where like half the stuff in my lab is. A lot of stuff still boxed. Probably the batteries. So yeah. This way. Make sure yeah everything looks good now. Now it sits flush without touching the LEDs. So that's what we wanted. And now when we put these hex standoffs on, I bet you. They're not going to bottom out. So they're all on. They all look pretty straight. And yeah, I guess one way to tell uh, which order the digits go in, because it should, the seconds should always count up. So what I can do is plug it in and see which set of lights light up. And if they light up sequentially in order, then I know that they have to be arranged sequentially. There. Okay, they are sequential. So you can see there, if I turn off these lights, it's, ooh, has a fancy animation, I like that. But yeah, you can see it goes from front to back, fully in order. And then it does that kind of neat rolling effect that actually a lot of Nixie clocks do because uh, that's to prevent damage to uh, the Nixie tubes. I bet you how they intend you to do this is you just like tighten down two of these and you have to slot them in one at a time from the top. 
I'm just temporarily doing two of these, not all of them, until I can um, get all of these slotted in there. Then, then I'll worry about undoing them and then getting the top clear piece on. Okay, so now, very carefully, without disturbing the black panel, remove these screws and then <laughs> hurry up and get the uh, clear top on and screwed down. And these shouldn't need to be tightened like a lot anyway. Actually, I would advise not doing it because you could crack the acrylic. So they only have to really be snug. Okay. That looks like she's done. Construction is actually really good and it feels super heavy once you're done because it's a load of plexiglass. Uh, if you drop this though, uh, it, I can almost guarantee that it'll be toast. <laughs> Uh, just because acrylic and like thin, very thin bunch of slats of acrylic, uh, not good for droppage. So, obviously, uh, you can see, I mean, I'm going to have to turn down the lights for you to actually see what it's doing. But, uh, okay, so I turned off the lights so that you can actually see it. You can see from the top... Uh, I mean, it looks like it's flickering to the camera, but to my eyes, not really. I think that's just a frame rate thing with my camera. But yeah, you can see from the top, it's going through each panel. And it looks really cool from like the side and the top. Uh, but from the front, yeah, you can see there. It's not super bright. And, uh... Oh, yeah, because there is a light sensor. So because I turned off the overhead lights, it's dimmed the, uh... The output but yeah it's plenty visible i can see it says zero 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 fifty three fifty four fifty five six seven eight nine and yeah ah uh, changes the colors so yellow rainbow rainbow looks cool and then every two digits is a different color now green uh like pink blue green just a very gentle gradient let me play around with this. I'm going to go back to the site and see if they actually have instructions on how to set the time and do other stuff and change settings. So give me one sec on that. Okay, so I have the clock set up here. It's actually powered from my uh, tiny little computer thingy there. And uh, it, I finally got around to setting it up in 12-hour mode. There's an entire menu system. I haven't even fully figured out how it works. So I'll just flash up on the screen what it is. It was um, on the sales page like towards the bottom. So here you go. Good luck figuring it out. I can, I basically could barely figure out how to use it because this can only display numbers. Everything is a number. There's no text or words or anything. And I think the translation is a little bit, eh, a little bit not clear uh, because some of the things I still don't know what it does. <laughs> so anyway, generally, um, there's two buttons. There's a triangle and a square. They're both touch sensitive. They're both on this one side. Uh, if you press, um, I got this lined up. It looks kind of not the same color. It looks like a, a Nixie, very Nixie orange to my eyes, but on camera, it's not showing up like that for some odd reason. Anyway, uh, if you press this triangle button, it'll shuffle through like whatever preset color settings. So here it's the orange I selected. Now it's red. Now it's like this multicolor kind of from green to sort of violet, something like that. Now it's every two digits is a different color and all these will fade and you can actually pause the fading at any point in time by pressing the, uh, the triangle or the square button in the back there and now it's paused. So if you like a specific color and you don't want it to fade, you just click that. You press it again to like unpause it and the LEDs will actually change color on the bottom there. Let's see that real quick whenever I hit the button. 
So, and you can go through to your heart's content, and there's a bunch of different presets. And the one that I was on was every digit is the exact same color, and it always starts on this kind of pinkish white color. And it'll fade through, and you can just pause it whenever you want. And so say I want it to be that bluish white color. Uh, so to set, to get into like the menu, you have to press both the buttons at the same time and quickly, then it'll, uh, show a number. And this is what me like top level menu option is selected. So it's zero right now. So if I press the triangle button, it goes to one, which is menu option one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14, I think 14 different menu options. 15? 15. Yeah, so there's there's 16 total, starting at zero to 15. And to enter menu option, you press square. And so now this is changing the time. Yeah, that, that is correct because it is about 8 p.m. right now, which is 20 in military time slash 24 hour time. And yeah, so that's how you do it. And if I wanted to uh, increment or whatever, I think it's square is like enter and triangle is like increment. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I can go through here to change each of the things. So while seconds is the one blinking, if you press square again, it'll just exit to the main screen. And so now this is the time that I just set. And it really doesn't do it justice looking at this with the lights on. It looks harder to see on camera because for some reason these digits are like all glowing it kind of looks like and it's like not really that apparent. Like I can clearly see the one. I can see like the light outline of all the other digits but the one is very clearly lit. I'm going to dim the lights or shut them off and show you kind of closer to what my eyes see. There we go. This is closer to what my eyes see. Uh, one thing to note was I think the LED here on the the one digit that is uh, on this exact digit, uh, the red channel, I think there's like a, a cold solder joint. I'm going to have to fix it because it, it's always, it can't light up the red LED. So it's always sort of purplish, even if you try to select like a red color. The digits closer to the back are like noticeably dimmer it doesn't try to compensate so that obviously the digits closer to the front will look brighter they're all lit at the same brightness uh but because the ones are that are further back have to go through more material they look like noticeably dimmer in real life to the to the eye they're still visible but yeah they could have been smart about this in the software and compensate by like ramping up or down the, the uh the pwm but i have a feeling then that would cut into the the available color space because you only have so much modulation wiggle room if you do something like that so yeah it's not it's not a deal breaker but it's definitely like noticeable so one thing i think that might i mean they wouldn't have to change anything software side or hardware side uh the documentation maybe if they could get it looked at by someone who speaks english natively the picture that i put up with like all the instructions of what the menu items mean i think needs to be translated better and they need to describe within each menu like what each button does sort of thing, because it's sort of, you're just kind of fumbling around. It took me quite a while to figure out how to switch this from 12 to 24 hour time, because they tell you which menu item it is, but they don't tell you what the buttons do in there. And like, I just have to, I basically just filled, fiddled around with it for like a minute. And then I eventually saw 12 and 24 flashing on the screen and I figured, okay, I must set this to 12 and enter and it worked but it took me a little while so yeah i think documentation could be a bit better but definitely for this for the price this is like 30 bucks ish at least as of of me filming this video but that's that's a fantastic price for for this i've seen kits similar to this go for way more like in the over 100 dollars range given those are pre-assembled this you got to do yourself sort of but yeah, I think this is a really cool gift. Um, if you have someone, you know, a friend or uh, a spouse or relative who's into like tinkering and stuff, they would love this clock, especially given the price. Like, don't tell them it's only 30 bucks. They'll, they'll definitely think like, oh, man, you spent like, 
you know, over a hundred bucks on this skip. You're, you know, the best relative ever. Yeah. And once again, huge thanks to IC station for sending this guy in. This was really fun. Actually. I really enjoyed this. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've done like a technical kit assembly sort of video. So yeah, I had a lot of fun with this and I'm 100% going to leave this up on my nightstand here. And this will just tell me the time. Um, there is a light sensor I forgot to mention that does like auto dim and that kind of stuff. Uh, I turned it off somehow in the menu and I can't figure out how to turn it back on, but, uh, it's in there somewhere. You can have it auto dim or just always stay at a fixed brightness or whatever. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, quick addendum. Um, you can actually put this into like a voice mode, which is almost pointless. Uh, if you press and hold... There you go, the uh, square back button. Uh, it's racked into my voice right now, which just looks like a scramble of numbers from the front. But if you're to actually look from the top, uh, it's actually a VU meter. So, I mean, I guess if you put it face down, this would make kind of a bit more sense. Have some music going there. and uh, But yeah, from the front, it just looks like chaotic number scrolling. <laughs> and I think you you press and hold... To get back into time mode there you go but it does apparently just cancel out the uh the color that i selected well wow, that's kind of a pain oh yeah and uh there is a mode where you can manually set each digit's color but the adjustment's pretty coarse and for some reason orange is not on the list of colors you, the closest you can get is just red uh, but I love this sort of Nixie orange color. So uh, the only way to get that is to leave it in the, the scrolling mode where all the digits are the same color and then wait for it to get around to orange and then pause it. That's the only way, which I mean, this is something I'm just going to set and then leave it at that. So it's it's a slight inconvenience, but it's just one that exists. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.